Let's introduce head coach, Jake Spavadol. Coach, how are you? Doing well. How are you guys doing tonight? Yeah. So you take those levels down a bit, you can't sound better than us. <laughs> right. So this year four, now four you at Texas State. Um, take us through the offseason. The biggest emphasis for you in the program in terms of your personnel, your staff, just the approach to the program overall. What did you want to accomplish going into your four? And, uh, all right, so when, like, when you start, I won the season in. Uh, you focus on keeping your current roster there through these ever-changing climate of college football. And, uh, so you focus on your roster there, then you figure out who's coming back for the spring semester, and then you go in to recruit the boys that are, are needed for you to improve. And, uh, you know, it's, it's a long, tedious process. I'm telling you, the recruiting has gone insane over the last uh, year and a half now. And uh, our, our director of player personnel, Connor Anderson, I, I, I kind of feel for him at times, but he's literally had to recruit on campus every day for the last, you know, eight months, it feels like. And, uh, uh, and, and that's what you started with, you started with recruiting, right? And then you focus, go right into spring football, and we are returning a lot of guys right now. We are, and, uh, uh, which is, is which is very fun. You know, we, we talked about the 2020 season and the COVID eligibility freeze and just playing football and how this is going to add up to great experience for this year right now. And uh, uh, so, you know, you're, you're, you're tweaking the offense, you're adding more because you're, you've are you got a lot of guys that know what they're doing already, so you put more on the plate. And, uh, you know, we have Lane Hatcher come in as well, which adds more for the offense. You know, you got a lot of leaders back on defense, which is going to be fun. And uh, you go through spring football, and I thought it was a good spring football. I thought we had a lot of great culture talks and team talks and buy-in. Uh, and, then, and then you go right into spring, you know, uh, into summer conditioning. In summer conditioning, uh, our, our spring coach, Damon Harrington, uh, does an unbelievable job. And that's where the culture is formed. That's where the toughness, you know, physical toughness is formed. And, uh, you know, you just add a few more players in the summertime when you go into fall camp and you're right back at it. It's a never-ending process. It really is. And, uh, you know, we end up going into a mock week last week, which, you know, the radio, the, the sound and everything was a little off. We should have had our mock radio show last week, but that was on Q Brand. Always open. But, you know, here we are. You know, and uh, it's been a lot of work. You know, I, I really love our staff. I love our team. Uh, the buying is great. You know, uh, they got a look in their eye that's different than what it's ever been in the year that I've been here. And uh, I'm ready to go out there and, uh, and hit someone else yeah. and go up against someone different, you know, uh, here this Saturday. You know that jab is because one of the first times I ever used Coach Fab, I knew the fact he was a punter. Yes. Uh, so, a quarterback. so he got me back for that one. Clint, it feels like yesterday you and I were in New Orleans talking to Coach Fab, looking ahead to training camp. That's already come and gone. I mean, this is game week now. But Coach, as you look back at training camp, how well did your players respond? How well prepared are they for the opening of Saturday? Yeah, you know, the NCAA changed the rules. Um, you know, like, uh, you can only practice, you know, five times a week in fall camp, which uh, that used to be like 20 times a week. But they allowed us to work with them over the summertime and, uh, and, and do have some continuity things, routes on there, you can even have footballs and you can actually coach. And uh, uh, that's increased our installs tremendously. Like, when we started our first day of fall camp, it was like we were on, you know, day 15 of our installs because we've just been working on stuff all uh, throughout the entire summer and, and also just kind of building off of what we created in, uh, in spring football. So, uh, you know, you got to give, uh, you know, credit to our staff, you know, uh, credit to these kids. We kept telling them we're not slowing down. We need to keep moving forward because, like I've said for the last really year, our kids are buying in, their, their, their accountability, their discipline, their, just everything that they do is awesome. What we've got to do is translate to the field. You know, and that's that's uh, been our Achilles deal. We've had some unfortunate ups and downs, injuries, uh, unfortunate losses, but we've learned from that. We've already came to adversity, and uh, I, I think these kids now are ready to go out there and, and, and compete and, and perform this weekend. So I'm fired up for this day. Coach, you talk about changes in workouts and what you're allowed to do. And when it comes to, to getting guys here in the summer and going through those workouts, you need leaders. You and I talked earlier today about the experience of this bunch coming back. A guy you mentioned specifically, Sione Tupo. This will be his seventh year of playing college football. It's just an unheard of, of thing in college football down through the years. But when you look to your guys in leadership roles, who are some of those guys and how heavy do you lean on in the locker room? We got a lot of leadership this year. And it has increased every single year. And a lot has to do with the experience. You know, you look at CMA and I'm saying he's a veteran. He's beginning yeah. at our school, you know, just for uh, coming, 
years is playing college football. But, you know, you look at the defensive side, you got Jordan Rebels, which you guys are going to talk to tonight. He's been on uh, SCLA. They were the captain vote getters, but we've also got Lennon Harris uh, on that side. They've got Cordell Rogers, who's been around for a long time as well. Uh, you know, there's just a lot of guys that have been around on that side. And you look at the offensive side, Lane Hatcher, just the work ethic that he's brought in and, and won the team over in his years as, you know, uh, my captain for uh, just from the, from the voting side of things. But, you know, you got Kyle Urban, you got Russell Baker. You know, we, I think we're reading that we've got close to 50 guys that have played over 10 college football games yeah. in their career. So it's very important because at the end of the day, you know, they're the ones playing the game. And it can't be just coach led all the time. The best teams I've ever been a part of are player led. And uh, this is very similar to some of the successful teams I've had in terms from a leadership standpoint. So it is very critical to have success here, you know, especially in the college football area. You talk about taking it to the field, translating that work to the field on game days, game nights. Where do you see, the, I guess, the biggest improvement in this team year over year last year? This? Yeah, you know, I think the, the execution side of things, uh, we're, we're a lot more efficient than what we've been. You know, uh, I think we have a better understanding because of the installs over the summertime and fall camp. We have a better understanding of situational awareness. Because uh, uh, a lot of people think they just go out there and run the plays, but you got to know the down the distance and the situation that you're in. You're down or you're up, you need a field goal, like where you're at. And, uh, we put our kids in these situations nonstop. And uh, uh, that's where I see the biggest improvement is, is that they, they know what needs to be accomplished on a play-by-play play basis. And, uh, you know, that's something very important for us because, uh, you know, we've been a team that has found ways to lose games and, uh, you know, kind of shot ourselves in the foot of times. And uh, that's something that we take pride in. We really I magnified that during practice about the efficiency and making sure that we're not beating ourselves. So uh, that, that's the thing that we're at. And uh, I think he's did the actions to go put in action as we do. Coach, you talk a lot about leadership uh, earlier in the show. And looking at the captain specifically, and you reference C.O.A. Kubo being the captain on this team. And Jordan Rebels, who we're talking to in just a bit, offensively, Kyle Hurdle, Lynn Hatcher, also captains. What role does the, the captain specifically play with your program? Yeah, they, we, I lean on them. I, so what we do, and uh, our, our director of player development, James Sherman, uh, he does a really good job of creating a leadership group. Right? We have our, our four captain vote getters. They're the ones that I like really lean on heavy. I think they're spurred on the type deals, but we like the leadership we're talking about. You know, with, with Jeff, like there's all these other guys that you can bring in, and uh, you know, we're playing with what we're talking about with uh, just all these guys that you can bring in, just to uh, lean on them on. What, what uniforms you want to wear, what's the approach, what do you guys want to eat, what do you want to do, like, you know, it's just kind of those things that you lean on them, uh, because this is their team, you know, their team is, uh, this is what it's about, <laughs> you know, and uh, they're the ones that uh, get to fix all the all the issues that are on their mind, they can handle things in the locker room, if there's anything that is bugging them or think is holding us back, they come to us with, uh, with you know, kind of proposals and stuff of where we can maybe help this make this better, so. Uh, you know, I, I am a player's coach. I listen to these guys up and night because at the end of the day, they're the ones playing the game and yeah. it's something to put them in a position to have success. So again, Jordan Rebel is the captain for this Bobcat defense. He's our guest coming up next. A lot more coming up in the show. In addition to visiting with Jordan Rebels, we'll talk more about Nevada, the opponent coming up Saturday, Zach Spout and all your questions and more. Back on board the Game Time Radio Show, the Texas State Sports Network from Learfield.